So yesterday, we made a ranking list of the absolute worst NFL free agency decisions that occurred in this past free agency period. And of course, many of you guys suggested that we do the best free agency signings, get a little bit more positive with it. So what's going on, guys? Your boy Microphone back again with some fresh new NFL content for you guys. Now, guys, we are about 300 subscribers from hitting 30,000 subscribers on this channel. That's absolutely remarkable. We literally just started making content about a month and a half ago so I wanted to take some time to thank you guys and if you're new to my channel you love NFL content you love all of football because we're gonna be covering the NFL the XFL the CFL even no not the CFL but the NCAA as well we have a bunch of content to make leading up to the NFL draft as well so much fun stuff to do make sure you take a moment to drop a like on the content to help the channel to continue to grow subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a bit of this NFL news. Furthermore, I'm going to be doing a cool little stream that we tried last night. It's probably the most success I've had streaming thus far, and we're pretty much just going to be chilling later on tonight on Twitch. If you're up at like 9 p.m. Eastern time and you're bored out of your mind, you want to just come by and react to uh, watch me react to some videos and just talk to the chat and communicate with you guys. This is a phenomenal way to also suggest video ideas to me. Then my Twitch is in the description down below, twitch.tv forward slash flight mic. And of course, all the rest of my social are in the description down below as well as my TikTok at the flight mic now starting off at number 12 is the panthers signed teddy bridgewater to a three-year 63 million dollar contract and look i understand there's a part of me that is a little bit skeptical about this signing which is why it is rated so low and it has nothing to do with teddy bridgewater it has nothing to do with the panthers as a matter of fact i applaud them for getting rid of an, a regime that was consistently looking like they were going to be mediocre with all due respect. I really like the idea of Cam Newton commanding the offense as the quarterback and Luke Keekley being the captain of the defense. But ever since their failed Super Bowl run, that team has not been the same. And there's no point in trying to continue to build upon a culture that has clearly failed. Well, I wouldn't say it's a complete failure, but they didn't win a Super Bowl. So, and most teams would consider that to be a failure. As much as I loved the Cam Newton era in Carolina, by the way. But here's the thing. I am typically extremely skeptical about signings like this. Signing the backup quarterback that has pseudo proved himself in an ideal situation to a big contract is not typically the way I would want to build my team, which is why it's ranked so low. But regardless, Teddy Bridgewater has proved that he has the stuff. He already had the stuff prior to going down with that freak injury when he was commanding the Minnesota Vikings as quarterback. He already went to a Pro Bowl back then as well. And this is just a great story to see that Teddy Bridgewater finally gets his own team. I really can't comment further on this because I don't understand the vision that Matt Rule's trying to build in Carolina. I do like the way that they're trending and I do appreciate the fact that David Tepper wants a completely new regime and to build this team from the ground up and hopefully build a contender. But ultimately, I'm not exactly sure if this is the right way to go, which is why I have it as the least best signing. But regardless, they still got one of the most desired quarterbacks on the market to a fairly fair contract on three years, 63 million. And I really, really hope it works out. At number 11, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers bringing back Nadama Kung Su on a one year, $8 million contract. And honestly, I feel like Nadama Kung Su had a lot to do with the new culture that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers built. A lot of people didn't really recognize this because Jameis Winston was turning the ball over so much last year. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have one of the most underrated defenses in the entire league. Shaq Barrett, a guy that was considered consistently an afterthought on the Denver Broncos defense, brought in 19 and a half sacks. And then I feel like Nadama Kungstu had a lot to do with that. He was absolutely phenomenal at stuffing the run. The stat sheet doesn't give this guy enough credit and bringing him back on a one-year deal, which is what Nadama Kungstu has been doing recently, signing these large one-year deals and just providing good value on the deal. Teams, are, teams don't have to remain that committed to him and he stays fairly motivated because he's on one-year deals. I feel like this is a phenomenal deal to bring back a player that was a former number two overall pick that still has a lot left in the tank. So I applaud the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for maintaining their defensive identity. At number 10, I think I have my most controversial pick here with the New Orleans Saints bringing back Malcolm Jenkins. Now bear in mind, this is not the 26-year-old Malcolm Jenkins that the New Orleans Saints let leave to the Philadelphia Eagles. 
but rather, this is the 33-year-old version of him, and regardless, I feel like the reason the Saints did this move is because they were missing that captain on the defensive side of the ball. You see, the New Orleans defense is very, very, very good in my opinion. The only issue is, at times, they look fairly inconsistent. Regardless, Marcus Davenport, Cameron Jordan, and Marcus Lattimore make for some great defensive pieces, and I feel like if they had a captain that has been to two Super Bowls and won two Super Bowls on their team, they could definitely be one of the best defenses in the entire league. Now, I do feel like it was a slight overpay at four years and $32 million because he is going to turn 33 years old in December, but I feel like what they're getting in return and considering the fact that they're trying to make the most out of Drew Brees' final years with the roster is definitely worth it. The New Orleans Saints need a good defense in order to succeed down the line and their offense is already taken care of by the big three of Alvin Kamara, Drew Brees, and Michael Thomas, and the newly signed Emmanuel Sanders. Now at number nine, this is a move that needs to be way, way higher on this list, and I don't know why I have it so low here. It's definitely a goof on my behalf, and it's that the Steelers signed Eric Ebron for two years and $12 million. Now, guys, this is less than the amount that the Bears signed Jimmy Graham to. So bear that in mind, because the Bears signed Jimmy Graham to a two-year $16 million contract, and we ranked that as one of the worst deals last night. Over here, the Steelers get a player that really proved himself in Indianapolis when he had a good quarterback such as Andrew Luck, and they desperately needed an upgrade from the likes of Vance McDonald. I have faith that if Ben Roethlisberger consistently gets the ball to Eric Ebron, we're going to see some great things from Eric Ebron, and this is tremendous value at the deal. It's two years and $12 million to make a very, very big upgrade for a team that desperately needed it. Like prior to this, I would say that the Steelers had a D plus tight end rating. Now I would bring them all the way up to a B with potential for an A minus. At number eight, we have have the Philadelphia Eagles signing Nikel Roby Coleman for one year, one million dollars. Yes, you read that right. That value in itself is the reason why the deal is here. The Philadelphia Eagles opted to completely overhaul their secondary in free agency, and this is one of the small, low-key moves that they made. Now, Nikel Roby Coleman is forever going to be known for two things: one, being a very, very small cornerback, he's about five foot seven, and two, for that infamous hit that he had that should have been a pass interference that resulted resulted in not being a pass interference. Nonetheless, the Eagles get tremendous value here. Once again, one year, $1 million to upgrade your cornerbacks. Without a doubt, I feel like Nikel Roby Coleman is going to prove himself on this deal and demand significantly more money with a different team next year. But in the meantime, the Philadelphia Eagles get remarkable value and get a phenomenal cornerback. But that's not all the Eagles did, because at number seven, the Philadelphia Eagles would also trade a third round pick and a fifth round pick for Darius Slay. And I feel like this is great because, come on, Darius Slay coming back for a third and a fifth is definitely equal value. He straight up said that he didn't respect Matt Patricia, and I feel like the culture that the Eagles have cultivated in Philadelphia is ideal for Darius Slay. Now, once again, this is a guy that shut down Amari Cooper on national television last year. He's proved himself over and over again to be one of the premier cornerbacks, when without a doubt one of the top 10 cornerbacks in the NFL. And I feel like if he plugs in and fulfills his potential with the Philadelphia Eagles, then this Eagles defense could turn the clock back to where they were in 2017. Although the loss of Malcolm Jenkins is going to sting a little bit. If this doesn't turn into Namdi Asamoah Part 2, I expect the Philadelphia Eagles to be the team to beat in the NFC East. And this is coming from a Dallas Cowboys fan. At number six, we have the Indianapolis Colts signing Phillip Rivers to a one-year $25 million deal. Now, I know this could be controversial because I know a lot of Colts fans said they absolutely hated this move considering the fact that Philip Rivers was literally throwing wide open passes to the opposing team last year. He clearly lost a step and you could make the argument that he has passed his prime. But the fact of the matter remains that the Indianapolis Colts gave Jacoby Brissett a chance and he's a good game manager, but he's not a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And as good as the Indianapolis Colts defense is, it's not a defense that could carry them to a championship. It's not like the type of defense where you could have Rex Grossman at your quarterback and make it to the Super Bowl like the Chicago Bears did over 10 years ago, or it's not the type of defense where you could have Trent Dilfer in at the quarterback position and have the Baltimore Ravens carry you to a championship like they did in 2000. So 
they do need some quarterback that could make moves and make plays happen on occasion. A one-year $25 million deal is completely low risk, and the Colts can afford this risk. They have a great defense, and if it flops, then they could com be competing for Trevor Lawrence next year. It's Super Bowl or bust, and what the Indianapolis Colts are expecting Phil Rivers to do is hopefully do his best to imitate Brett Favre and Randall Cunningham in the latter part of their careers. Although with better results, both of those players came within a play of making it to the Super Bowl. So I also believe in Frank Reich as a quarterback. He has proven to be extremely effective with quarterbacks that can air the ball out. So I think that this is a good move. But again, this is a move that could completely blow up in their face. Once again, it's a boom or bust. At number five, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers signing Tom Brady, and I expect a lot of Bucks fans to be upset. Some people would expect this to be the top on, uh, thing on this list, but the fact of the matter remains, Tom Brady is 42 years old. You don't know how much this guy has left in the tank, and a lot of people are comparing this to when Michael Jordan went to the Wizards, but that's not where I want to go with this. My issue is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers still have a lot of holes to fill. That offensive line isn't the most prettiest looking offensive line. That pass rush is fairly efficient, but their corners and DBs definitely need some help, and they could also use a better running back as well. Regardless, this is still a huge upgrade over Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston literally turned the ball over 30 times just through the air by throwing interceptions. Tom Brady took four years to hit that mark, so regardless, they're going to have a quarterback that could hold on to the ball and be significantly more efficient in moving down the field and that in of itself deserves the number five spot but I don't think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a Super Bowl favorite they still have a lot of work to do in order to get there and fortunately for them they still have an NFL draft but still Tom Brady plus Mike Evans plus Chris Godwin and Bruce Arians should make for some very interesting uh, TV and I need to know your opinions in the comment section down below would you draft Tom Brady for your fantasy football team? I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence here. At number four, I have the Baltimore Ravens getting tremendous value by trading only a fifth round pick for the ageless Calais Campbell. And Calais Campbell has been a beast for his entire career. He has yet to produce a season where I literally look at him and say, wow, is he going to be okay? Is he slowing down? He's been doing this for 11 years and giving up only a fifth round pick for a pass rusher that produces at this rate is a phenomenal value. At this point of his career, he's only 33 years old. He's been in the NFL for 11 years. Calais Campbell already has 88 sacks. In 2017, he had 14 and a half sacks. And in 2018, he had 10 and a half. I expect his production to be more where it was this past year with Jacksonville, where he had six and a half sacks. But I do believe in the Baltimore Ravens defense a little bit more than the 2019 Jacksonville Jaguars. And I feel like if the Ravens get Calais Campbell some additional help, then he he could turn back the clock to 2017. He is a phenomenal pass rusher and just giving up a fifth round pick for him is flat out highway robbery. At number three, I have the Minnesota Vikings trading Stephon Diggs to the Buffalo Bills. So to put things in perspective, the Bills pretty much had to give up the number 22 overall pick this year, the fi a fifth round pick this year, a sixth round pick this year, and a fourth round pick next year to get themselves Stephon Diggs. But you have to understand that this year's NFL draft is absolutely loaded with wide receiver talent. The Minnesota Vikings get to unload Stephon Diggs' hefty contract onto the Buffalo Bills and they still could draft a wide receiver this year to put alongside Adam Thielen and they could pretty much develop that new wide receiver very slowly and this is a very deep wide receiver draft I say it in practically every video I feel like the Minnesota Vikings literally handled the Stefan Diggs situation phenomenally he was festering and he was annoyed and every NFL team apparently seemed to know that Stefan Diggs really wanted out of Minnesota and at the end of the day they got tremendous value for a very good player so I have to tip my hat off to the Minnesota Vikings getting a first round pick a fifth round pick a sixth round pick and a fourth round pick for a wide receiver that you just gave the bag to two years ago is a phenomenal deal they could draft his replacement and the replacement could be either better and have way less of a temper and on top of that that replacement will be significantly cheaper so hats off to the Minnesota Vikings that was a phenomenal deal for them at number two, I have the New Orleans Saints somehow bringing back Drew Brees for two years on a $50 million contract. And the reason why this is ranked so high is 
not only did they get Drew Brees to agree to come back, but they uh, got him to agree to come back on a below market deal. This is essentially what Philip Rivers got, and Drew Brees definitely deserves way more than this, but you could tell that this guy is hungry for another Super Bowl, and you'll do whatever it takes to retire with a Super Bowl championship. I have to tip my hat off to both sides here. I feel like Drew Brees said, okay, I'll give you guys a discount so you could get me additional help, and the New Orleans Saints were able to convince Brees to come back with their culture. They've been so close to winning the Super Bowl lately or getting to the Super Bowl lately. It literally breaks my heart whenever I see them not make it to the Super Bowl because they always lose in the most heartbreaking of ways. But hopefully this could be their year and they have two more years. I think one of those years is a he could void if he really doesn't want to play anymore. But they have two more years with Drew Brees, hopefully to win him one more ring. And the number one spot on this entire list is the Arizona Cardinals stealing DeAndre Hopkins from the Houston Texans. And I, I think this is like the third time I talked about this trade. I could go on and on about this trade though. All the Arizona Cardinals had to part with was a 2020 second round pick, a David Johnson, which they happened to bench, and a 2021 fourth round pick to get themselves a true top three wide receiver in the NFL and to get Kyler Murray some additional help. Furthermore, if the Arizona Cardinals wanted to, they could draft another wide receiver in the NFL draft, which I expect them to in the second or third round, and now they could spend that eighth overall pick trying to build up that offensive line to protect Kyler Murray so he doesn't have to be running all around the pocket to make plays this year. I expect Kyler Murray to make a huge step this year as a result of this trade, and I really hope for the sake of Deshaun Watson, that Bill O'Brien gets fired or they do something because I am literally watching Deshaun Watson get wasted away in Houston and he deserves better than this in my opinion. Now let me know in the comment section down below if there are any players or signings that I omitted and aside from that I'm your boy Microphone and I'll catch you guys in our next upload.